Well, let's bring you more on our lead story. Now that NAVDAC has approved the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine for emergency use, uh, you may be wondering, what are the implications? Well, Dr. Ikiala Ishaku is a virologist and public health epidemiologist. He joins us on the program virtually. Well, it's great to have you uh, on the COVID-19 update. First, let me ask you, what does this emergency use approval by NAVDAC entail, really? What it entails is that um, it is an indication that there is a global vaccine shortage. And so um, we need to close the gaps uh, to see that uh, we do not miss out in the 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 accessibility of the vaccines. Secondly, um, the uh, the vaccines, the emergency use is to actually curtail what we uh, public health modelists have envisaged the third wave. So uh, the emergency use in place is to prevent uh, the the third the, uh, the third wave in Nigeria, as we can see from Brazil, from India, and other parts of Asia. Uh, the, the approval of Pfizer is in right direction. This is because it is one of the best COVID-95% efficacy, more than virtually all other six approved uh, COVID-19 vaccine. So uh, the approval, what we what we are, what we shall be seeing in the coming days is that there will be decrease in community transmission, decrease in hospitalization rate, and also so uh, that will mimic or stop uh, the third wave uh, experience in Nigeria. But you know, the, the NAVDAC DG said emphatically that, well, for now, this is going to be for emergency use and not total use. Uh, so you say that, I mean, moving forward, it might reduce infections, but this is for emergency use. So is it any different from what we're doing currently with the AstraZeneca vaccine? Absolutely. Um, you know that the Pfizer vaccine has lesser side effect. Um, uh, no blood clotting has been experienced. Uh, there are more cases, uh, there are reports of side adverse side effect or adverse uh, reaction as a result of uh, AstraZeneca Oxford uh, vaccine. Uh, the coming in of um, Pfizer vaccine is in the right direction uh, for emergency use. This is because um, uh, I think uh, they don't want, um, the NAVDAC DG doesn't want to open up, but uh, definitely there is a vaccine shortage in the country. Globally, there is a vaccine shortage. And so if we get a Pfizer vaccine to augment the AstraZeneca vaccine, that will go a long way to also help Nigeria in curtailing the COVID-19 virus uh, in pandemic or the, the spread of the disease. Uh, secondly, too, that will actually decrease um, hospitalization, just like the way I said before. It will mm. also uh, decrease community transmission mission and it will be in short wave. So I strongly believe um, uh, uh, that it is in the right direction. It is for emergency use, emergency use because we have a global vaccine shortage. We need to augment, we need to close the gap in terms of accessibility uh, and then uh, in, even in terms of vaccine uptake by the general population. So we are doing this in the right direction so that mm. we can be able to close the gap in terms of vaccine shortage. I mean, that's saying that, I mean, the WHO had given it the EUL as far back as December. But let's talk about the elephant in the room. Do you see any challenge with storage now that the Pfizer-BioNTech uh, company says that new data demonstrate that their vaccine can be stored at temperatures of minus 25 to minus 15 degrees Celsius? And that's compared with uh, AstraZeneca, which, of course, can uh, you can still use normal refrigeration for the storage. So for this Pfizer vaccine, what are the challenges you see with storage? Yeah, some of the challenges that uh, uh, actually we shall be facing as a country, we don't need to play politics with this, is that um, uh, we shall be facing challenges of storage, which is normal uh, in a resource constraint setting like Nigeria, like in other developing countries and other developing nations. So yes, I agree with you that we'll be facing challenges of, of storage. And I believe that even before the approval, NAVDA would have, uh, and National Primary Healthcare would have put in modalities on ground on storage. But I think that at every point in time, we need to do what is called 
a time series point analysis of these vaccines. You will agree with me that last week, South Africa and Malawi destroyed the Oxford Azarica vaccine because at a point in time, they did analysis and they discovered that it has lost its efficacy. So what I will encourage NAVDAC to do is to open a window for research to actually do a time point series analysis, even at a point of administration of these vaccines. We need to also get a platform where we can get feedback from people that have adverse uh, side effects uh, as a result of uptake of the Pfizer uh, vaccines. So um, um, uh, we shall be getting challenges of storage, which is normal in resource constraint setting, but I will encourage that we do vaccine efficacy tests to actually establish that. Okay, just on a final note now. Uh, now that you're saying we need to close the gaps further, which other vaccines would you advise Nigeria to be looking at? I know there's talks about Johnson & Johnson, now Pfizer. Which other options are available for Nigeria, really? The options that are available in Nigeria is for us to have a local content development. <laughs> Uh, we, we need to actually look inwards. Uh, the only option is for us to have the political will. Uh, we have the human resources on ground. Uh, we need a presidential vaccine initiative. I want to see to how uh, the presidential tax force uh, uh, committee now and the press, not only for COVID, but for this. Uh, we need to start producing vaccines. Well, in house, Doctor, which is quite key. This is timely so that we don't lose hope of this mm -hmm. in the nearest. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Kiala Shaku, we really did push our luck with the connection there, but we'd like to thank you so much for joining us on the program. Dr. Kiala Shaku is a virologist and a public health epidemiologist. Thank you.